All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kemp. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone. Welcome back. This is episode 54, The Land of Chem 2022, Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Research Expedition Recap Part 4, covering the Red Pyramid of Dashur. So in today's episode, the moment you have all been waiting for, and I will take you on a private tour inside of the Red Pyramid of Dashur. So after my first research expedition in 2017, the Red Pyramid quickly became one of my favorite structures in Egypt, and I am incredibly excited to finally present this exceptional footage from inside of these perplexing chambers. This has also been a very popular structure here on the channel, so I hope you all enjoy getting to see what it's like to explore this pyramid in person. So if you're new to the channel, my theory is that the Red Pyramid of Dashur was designed to produce an ammonia solution that was predominantly utilized for fertilizers and industrial agriculture. I have a ton of videos here on the channel explaining exactly how that structure operated, and I will put several links in the video description below, specifically to the Red Pyramid Fluid Dynamics Experiment, the Chemical Analysis of the Red Pyramid Staining Part 1, and the Function of the Red Pyramid Part 3, which features an animation of exactly how this structure operated. So once you finish watching today's episode, please subscribe, click that little notification bell so that you get noticed when the new videos premiere every week, and you can go back and see exactly how this chemical engineering was accomplished. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book or pick up one of the new Land of Chem t-shirts. All now available at thelandofchem.com. Thank you so much to all of the new subscribers and to everyone that supported the channel. I do this for you, so I really hope you're enjoying the material. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with today's episode. So this is my favorite picture from my day in Dashur during this year's research expedition. And you can see the red pyramid here in the foreground and in the distance, the bent pyramid. And as I mentioned before, the Red Pyramid was producing an ammonia solution that was then converted into solid ammonium bicarbonate inside of the Bent Pyramid. And I have more exclusive tour footage from inside of the Bent Pyramid coming up soon, so please subscribe and stay tuned. And in today's tour, we will take a journey into the northern pump shaft of the Red Pyramid and descend down into these three reaction chambers. And this northern pump shaft is accessible today via a staircase that has been erected on the northern side of the structure, which allows you to access this opening on the northern side of the pyramid. I will then take you through the primary steam reformer into the secondary air reformer, and then up a modern staircase that has been installed here and up to the final synthesis chamber here, which is where the nitrogen and hydrogen gases that were produced in the first two chambers are converted into ammonia gas, which is then dissolved into an aqueous solution and extracted from the system. So here, the original modern apparatus that was here, and the configuration of these chambers and the physics involved in their reaction process bear a remarkable similarity to those of the Red Pyramid of Dashur. And I propose that attempting to reverse engineer the Egyptian pyramids directly influenced our advances in modern chemical engineering during the Industrial Revolution. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, please go to thelandofchem.com. I have brand new Land of Chem merch. There's the fifth degree logo, an alchemical symbol for hydrochloric acid featured on the raw image for the Central Pyramid of Giza that was taken during my 2021 research expedition to Egypt. And of course, the OG second degree logo that I'm wearing in today's video, now available at thelandofchem.com. And don't forget... There are limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book still available, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, and this book is the genesis for my entire YouTube channel and project. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website, thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a t-shirt, grab a limited first edition print copy of the book. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. So thank you all so much in advance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here are two spectacular rare old photos from inside of the primary steam reformer here on the left and inside of the secondary air reformer here on the right. And remember, 
Yet this entire wall is covered up with a modern wooden staircase that you will see in the video. And I wanted to include these pictures so you can see what this structure looked like originally before it was cleaned and opened to the public. And you can clearly see the fluid dynamic pattern flowing around the bottom of the chamber here through this corner. And in the upper vault, you can see that staining pattern moving from the upper vault down through this connecting shaft leading into the secondary air reformer. And here on the right, these profuse extrusions of strontium and other rare exotic metals that I presented in the chemical analysis of the red pyramid staining episode, link in the video description below. So now that you know the proposed function of this structure, without further ado, let's take a journey inside an ancient chemical reactor system and enter the red pyramid of Dashur. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the land of Chem, live here in Dashur, with, of course, my guide and good friend, the one and only Yusuf Awian of the Kemet School of Ancient Mysticism. And a new member of the land of Kemet. Yes, of course. <laughs> nice shirt, Yusuf. Thank you. And today we will be investigating the Red Pyramid of Dashur. We have discussed this in great detail on the channel already, but I will be giving you an exclusive tour inside of the structure and coming up with some high definition photos and videos of exactly what you guys are looking to see which is the chemical staining inside of this magnificent structure so we are going to ascend the modern staircase here up to the entrance that you can see on the northern side there and then i will be taking you on a personal journey inside the structure stay tuned all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the land of Kem, live here in Dashur. And we are about to descend into the depths of the Red Pyramid. And Yusuf is waiting there to clear the entranceway. And again, this is gonna be an exclusive private tour inside the structure. Stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Down into the northern pump shaft of the Red Pyramid. And bear with me here, ladies and gentlemen. It is not the easiest thing in the world to get down these stairs and record simultaneously. Again, as we've discussed on the channel, if this was intended for a pharaonic burial, how in the hell are you getting all the stuff down in here? And you'll see here, as we approach this section of the shaft, that red coloration that we see in the exterior stones of the structure. And I can already smell the faint smell of ammonia. And look at how much of that coating is here on the top of the northern pump shaft. I would say we're about halfway down right now. And as you all know, the analysis was taken from inside of the chambers, but I don't know if anyone has confirmed what this material is. The red stuff. It's possible that it's the strontium that is composing the limestone and the remainder of the chambers. It also looks a little bit like iron oxide to me, which we've also seen at pretty much all of the structures in Egypt. So we know that the stones around these structures have a very high content of iron oxide. We saw that all over the Giza Plateau. Ooh. And again, this shaft does not have stairs. This is a modern stairway that's been installed to facilitate the entrance process. So how were people getting down in here? They weren't. People were never intended to go inside of this thing. And here, as we reach the bottom of the northern pump shaft, this is the pit 
that's located at the bottom pump shaft and you can see it's covered up by wood and in the recent experiments John showed us that this could be the possible inlet for the water that filled these chambers there's also several other holes inside the chambers that could have also been the inlets but this is that section and you can see the unique configuration of stone here and underneath this wooden platform is that pit that we use to demonstrate the fluid dynamics oh yeah see look at this black material and look at the broken part it's different, it's different than the pneumolytic stone. Yeah. This is more like the fine limestone that is used in the casing, yep. which is still also turned into yellowish and reddish. And you can see that there's a bunch of black material. Now this very well may be carbon deposits from torches or whatever else, because it's not the same as the black staining inside the structure, nor is it the red oxide coating. But as we go into this section, you can already see the fluid dynamic pattern. Look at on here on the wall. The pattern that you can already see developing that we showed in the video, how this could have been formed by the water filling process. And here's some of that strontium. So this here are extrusions, that reddish color, this, yeah. yeah. So the casing limestone as we can see here. So it's not the same one from the interior. So this is supposed to be calcium carbonate. So right. if this is iron and the other materials is going through it, then it has to be extrusion from the inner courses of stones. And I brought Yusuf up to speed on the chemical analysis yesterday. And he was as blown away as I was upon first hearing the full chemical analysis. So here we are inside of the primary reaction chamber and as we come back through the structure I'm going to switch over to my phone and do some high def pictures and videos but look at the staining pattern. And you can see it produces a wave in this southeastern corner, which the demonstration and experiment showed that as water was rushing in the structure, the water would crash into this wall, circulate around the chamber, crashing here into the northwestern wall in a circular pattern that gradually filled the chamber. And you can see here, this very unusual hole, which I propose is the inlet for the methane that was being introduced into the chamber. And as you look up the wall, just look at all that extrusion of strontium coming out of the stone. Not to mention all of the rare exotic metals that were also found on the surface of these walls. So the strontium itself is a part of the stone. We've learned that it's a very unusual type of limestone inside this structure. It's not calcium carbonate, it's strontium carbonate. However, the presence of all of those other metals, iron, zinc, antimony, all of the radioactive elements, barium, etc. Yeah, that's a good example right there. Look at all of that material just pouring out of the stone. And here we go through the connecting shaft into the second chamber and we're going to go all the way through to the final chamber and then I'll take you back in the reverse direction and Yusuf and I are going to talk about a whole lot more. But again, I just wanted to give you kind of a, a private exclusive tour inside of here. And this wooden box hides the air hose 
that is leading into the final chamber. And you can see here the pressure crack that extends all the way through this connecting shaft. And again, I do think this is a pressure crack. There were massive fluctuations of pressure and temperature inside of the structure. And there was moving water and moving gases that passed through this area. So it would be, certainly be one of the most vulnerable areas of the structure prone to damage. They also say that this could have happened during the excavation of the structure by Tomb Raiders. Yeah. But that's certainly so something. Talk, if we talk about the pressure of the structure itself and it reaches the point that it cracked like that, like that, what prevented it from collapsing then? If it already cracked like that from pressure, what, yeah. what happened to that pressure? So it could be more the kind of pressure that would be happening during the activation itself. Right. And here we go into the second chamber. And I just noticed it, but look here, you can see more of that fluid dynamic pattern here in the lower section. And man, that smell of ammonia gets more and more intense. All right, so here is the northern wall of the secondary reaction chamber. And look at how dense the staining is there in the upper portion of the chamber. Again, the extrusion of this material is a result of the temperature and pressure fluctuations. Heating all that material and causing it to drip out of the stone. And here are a few very unusual features. So everybody always wants to see this. Thank you, Yusa. And this is one of the holes that's been carved into the lower section of the secondary reaction chamber. And look at this, just massive extrusion. And there's another hole right over on this side. It has the same extrusions of strontium. And you can see here that black material coming up out of there are carbon deposits. So somebody carved these holes, stuck a candle in there or something to be able to light the structure. Perhaps with all the scaffolding to reach the higher chamber. Likewise as well, because, so again, in the excavation of this, they created scaffolding similar to what you see here so that they could get into the final chamber. Well, look at that crack right there. So this is a pretty good example of how the strontium is extruding from that particular section. And I wish that they would clear all the stuff out of here. Oh, perfect, Yusa, thank you. Because this is the southern wall of the secondary air reformer. And I believe that down here would be your outlet and your drain. But I would love to see what this wall looks like without this scaffolding here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now I've got my headlight on. Yeah, much, much better. And you can see what we were just looking at there, the hole with the massive extrusions of strontium. And into the upper vault of the secondary air reformer. It is absolutely fascinating inside of this structure and I just wish that, I wish we had more time. And look at here, look at this. Look at that material. Just pouring out of the stone. And this is the southeastern corner of the secondary chamber. You can see how dark the staining is on this wall.
It is a travesty that the conventional explanation of the staining is the bats. And I am extremely grateful to have had the opportunity to uncover the truth. And all of the credit goes to the Asita Project for having the courage to do what they did inside here because it is highly illegal. But good for them. Because now, the cat is out of the bag. Look at that. And I've been in here, this is my fourth time in here, but this is the first time that I've realized how prolific and dense the staining is in this upper portion of the chamber. And now that I know what it is, it makes it even more fascinating to be inside of here. The strontium is one thing. Knowing that this is an exotic type of limestone is one thing. But the rare, exotic, and radioactive metals that are found in that sample are indications of the true function of this structure. And according to my contacts at the Asita project, this is the area where the samples were taken. And we are here at the top of the staircase. Holy shit, look at that. There's no way that's bats. Look at how thick that is. We have seen, of course, similar stains that is made by bats, but the analysis that was made by the ACIDA project is just, what else can we see? Yeah, <laughs> it's what amazing. What appears with the eye is different than what the results with the analysis. So the analysis is more scientific for sure. Here we can notice one thing about also the interior design, which again doesn't seem that it was made for people to go in and out at all, because without these staircases we wouldn't be Correct. able to come up here. And then we can see that somebody later enlarged this path because yep. it was originally just from here until down here. Correct. So all the rest here was removed by chiseling yes. and we can still see the chisel marks on it. And ladies and gentlemen, what Yusuf is explaining, so we're here at the top of the secondary aeroform and this is the connecting shaft that leads into the final synthesis chamber. And you can see the line of where the original shaft was and anything below here, this was expanded by Tomb Raiders. By Tomb Raiders. Look, a hole like this is yeah. known for the rope and the bucket that they are removing the rubble. Correct. They are removing more materials looking for treasures. And, uh, also and, and many people have pointed out this hole and have asked me what the hole was for, but you can see yeah. the very clearly the chisel marks yeah. that are much more crude than the masonry of the structure. So this came along much later. And they, again, exactly. like Yusuf said, they wrapped a rope around here so that they could climb up to this chamber. Or also get rid of the rubble that they are removing Correct. from the corridors. And I, I have a feeling that these holes are most likely for some scaffolding yeah. that was installed in here at a much later date yes. where they were either taking stuff out of the pyramid or in the process of the excavation thereof they had to have some wooden scaffolding so they carved these holes now during what time period did that happen? that's certainly up for speculation man look at that right there that, that, that is almost black that whole thing And awesome. it makes you wonder, the final one on top there, why did they make it from two pieces? Not Why not one piece? Right. And the same in this corridor. You can notice... Yeah, the seam runs the right along here, the center. The ceiling here is like half of the block is on that side and right. half of the block is on that side. So here we go, through the connecting shaft. And looking back. Oh, that's a cool shot. Oh, 
All right. And it smells like ammonia in here. And to me, it doesn't smell like urine. Urine has a very distinct organic smell. And it smells like pure ammonia in here. It's, it's I always wondered why the smell is always stronger in this chamber Correct. than the two others. Correct. And we can see here clearly that those who were disappointed not finding any treasure, they actually removed the floor. Yes. As you can see, the same day yep. that they took the more of the stones from the bottom, they also, this was the same level for where the floor of this chamber used to be. Correct. On this higher level right here. And further. Yep. So it looks like, yeah, the, the smell is connected to more of the interior. To the pit. And look at the staining on the other blocks down there. These are the ones that is filled with the fossils. But check out this as well. There is a block right there, more than one, that appears to be from the casing stone blocks. Is this the back of it? Is there a chamber right. on that level out there, that down there that we haven't seen? Because why would they use the calcium carbonate, blocks of limestones in the inner, in the inner courses? We can see here that all of these are not the same type of limestone. Right. You said uh, this content is called what? Strontium. Strontium carbonate, right? But this fine white one right there is it's a different, different one. Right. one. And we were discussing that on the outside of the structure that there appears to be multiple different types of limestone used in yes. the structure. Yes. As we and can see, the, the, the broken part here is showing that this is the, that also calcium carbonate stone, not the strontium carbonate stone. Yep. So the, it appears that the interior chambers are made of the unique strontium carbonate, but perhaps the rest of the structure is made from the normal pneumolytic limestone that you'd find everywhere else. I would say the inner courses is made from the strontium carbonate yep. limestone and the casing of the corridors and the chambers is made from the calcium right. carbonate. Agreed. Yes. And so ladies and gentlemen, someone went through an extraordinary amount of work to excavate all of the stone from the inside of this chamber. And I propose that there would have been an outlet shaft or drain inside this original chamber. And perhaps that is what they found, which led to the excavation of this pit. So they saw a shaft going down into the bottom of this chamber and they excavated everything around this area in an attempt to figure out where that shaft goes. And they had to remove all of this stuff, all of the stone that was originally in here. And there's another stone down there. This, it's a very unusual shape because you see all of these are pretty regular block shapes. But I have a feeling that this is natural bedrock that we're looking at here. This one? Or, or this one with the circular, the, it looks like a nipple, correct. And I've, I've always called it a nipple. But remember the Ben Ben stone and the primordial mounds upon which all of these structures are built. So remember from the, the demonstration of the electromagnetic field experiment, that these pyramids are placed on top of very specific sites and they are interacting with the electromagnetic energy field coming up out of the earth. So it would certainly make a lot of sense that you incorporate a part of the earth into the structure itself, which is why we see these primordial mounds upon which all of these are built. So I have a feeling that's what that is. And it was feeding the electromagnetic energy into this chamber. And I'm gonna cut this video and return to my cell phone so I can get some higher def photos and videos. But this is that black stone that everybody refers to. And you can see that the staining starts here at the very bottom of that black stone. There's not a lot of staining below it, but the staining starts above it. Looks like some staining is older than others. Correct. Yeah. So. so fascinating day here in Dashur. And we're gonna have a whole lot more coming up soon. But final synthesis chamber of the Red Pyramid.
Stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have switched over to my phone to record some high def video and photos as we leave the final synthesis chamber of the Red Pyramid. And I'm gonna go slowly so that you all can see everything inside of this structure. I want you to notice something about Are you filming? Yes. And here we are, the upper vault of the secondary chamber. And just look at all of that extruded strontium and other materials. And it is, I'm standing on the staircase right now that leads into the final synthesis chamber. And this is the area where the samples were taken because you can literally reach and touch all of this fairly easily. And you can almost see the crystalline appearance of some of this staining. It's very shiny and there's, there's definitely a crystal content in there. What compound is that? So the chemical analysis just gave us the elemental composition, the breakdown of the elements that are in the samples. It doesn't say what compounds they actually are. So the antimony, for example, that's found in here is most likely antimony oxides or antimony sulfides. So again, we don't know the chemical compound breakdown, but we do know the elements that are in there. do my best to film as I walk down these stairs. Here we are looking at the southern wall of the secondary air reformer. And again, it would be Here we go, down the stairway. And everybody wants to see this one. Secondary air reformer. And one more thing I wanted to point out, ladies and gentlemen. So in all of the diagrams of the Red Pyramid, they show that there are those holes in the primary chamber. However, that is not accurate. Every single diagram I've found of the Red Pyramid says that there are holes in this primary chamber. And you can very clearly see that there are no holes. The only holes inside of this structure are in that secondary chamber that I showed earlier and those are not an original part of the structure. And again, look at the massive extrusions here on that southern wall. Amazing. Might be easy, might be easy. Yeah. Yeah, could be. Could be. You're almost there. Oh. And here we go. 
very slowly. So this shaft is three and a half feet tall. Almost one meter. One, uh, one meter and ten centimeters. Right, yep. Like, yeah. And look at the prolific red staining. Yeah. That definitely looks like iron oxide. Yeah. So we've got some very different types of geology that were but integrated. Can, can we look at the white part? Yeah. This part. This part here. Because this looks like the calcium carbonate. Here on the on this white part. That looks more like the calcium carbonate, not like the other one. So the builders of these monuments had an unbelievable knowledge of geology. Yes. So when they were quarrying these stones, how did they know the difference? How did they find what they were looking for? Because all of these stones were selected intentionally. So they had to have an ability to determine what type of stone was which. They had to know exactly where to find it. And they certainly understood the properties of these stones. Here's another unusual section. You can go ahead, sir, if you want. I'm enjoying too. Okay. Thank you. Look at all the colors. Yeah. Of the iron oxide. That yellow might be sulfides of some sort. Yeah. Iron sulfides. Sulfur typically has That's a yellow so color. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Right in here. This block here will tell us a lot. And I'm sure you guys can hear and see the difficulty that Yusuf and I are having navigating inside of this tiny little shaft. Check this. So again, how this, the hell this has new minutes in it. are they proposing that you're gonna get your pharaonic burial down in here with all the accoutrement thereof? But that still doesn't look the same stone that is in the inner courses. Correct. That looks, maybe there is three different types then. Yeah, so we have... Look, look here, this is all red, this is almost look like sandstone. Yep. It's not just the iron oxide, it's the, the entire block itself. So you had the casing stones, which are made of one type of limestone. You have the core masonry, which appears to be made of this iron oxide limestone. And then you have the inner chambers, which are made of the strontium carbonate. So they have three different types of limestone in this structure. That's what it appears to be. Why go through all the extra trouble? In other pyramids, we have a bigger combination of different igneous and sedimentary and the metamorphic rocks. Right. So this is not the, the only time they took that challenge. But as I always believe, with every different design and chosen materials, there is a different function, there is a different result. Exactly. And the builders of these monuments did not do anything by accident. And nothing they did, is random. Yeah. And they nothing did, is decorational. And nothing that without intention. So all of this stuff is very intentional. And it is intended to facilitate the functionality of the structures. They exactly. wouldn't they wouldn't work if you didn't use these specific combinations. Exactly. More to come here in Dashur. Next up, the Bent Pyramid. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 54, the Land of Chem 2022 Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Research Expedition Recap Part 4, covering the Red Pyramid of Dashur. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode, we are going to jump right into the Chemical Analysis of the Red Pyramid Staining Part 2. This is an episode you do not want to miss, ladies and gentlemen. And not to mention, I still have all the rest of my exclusive tour footage still coming up as soon as possible. We've got the Bent Pyramid of Dashur, Abu Sir, 
Abu Ghraib, the Red Pyramid, the Central Pyramid, the Giza Plateau. Don't forget about my exclusive tour inside of the Osiris Shaft in a full expose video discussing the chemical analysis of the metallic sealer compound that was discovered on the containers inside of that underground shaft system. All coming up soon, so if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification bell so that you get noticed when the new videos premiere every week. If you want to help support the channel, thelandofchem.com, limited first edition print copies of the book and new Land of Chem t-shirts. Thank you so much to all of the new subscribers and supporters of the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's video, so I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now. <laughs>